Over the past week, we've been focusing on Afghanistan as the Taliban mark one year since their return to power. The rulers in Afghanistan are facing an ongoing insurgency from an affiliate of ISIS there, and they are responding with an effort to build a new police force. MTS Tayyab is in Kabul for us. That's Afghanistan's capital to show us how it is working out. Uh, MTS, good morning. It's one thing to seize power, quite another to wield it. What you what you find out? Hey, Tony, good to talk to you, and you're absolutely right. As the Taliban's grip on Afghanistan only tightens, the former insurgents, now turned rulers, have to figure out how to serve and protect in cities and towns they used to attack. This is the new face of policing in the Taliban's Afghanistan. Former insurgents turned police officers, whose job now is to serve and protect. Most have traded in the traditional clothing they once wore on the battlefield for these new fitted uniforms and caps. But it's going to take a lot more than uniforms to turn former Taliban fighters into officers of the law. We went on a ride along with these recruits who confessed they aren't finding their new jobs easy. As the Taliban tries to remake its fighters into a professional police force, it's facing its own challenge from the Afghan affiliate of ISIS, known as ISIS-K. According to the UN's mission in Afghanistan, this past month is the deadliest the country has seen since the Taliban's takeover one year ago. Just last week, a suicide bombing at this mosque in Kabul killed 21 people, including the imam. Although no group has yet claimed responsibility, it follows a similar pattern, including an attack a week earlier claimed by ISIS-K, which killed another high-profile cleric who had close ties to the Taliban. ISIS-K first emerged in 2015. It's linked to the original Islamic State branch in Iraq and Syria, but is made up mainly of defectors from the Afghan and Pakistani Taliban who don't see those groups as extreme enough. Last year, in the final days of the U.S.'s chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan, a lone suicide bomber detonated a device that killed 13 U.S. service members and at least 170 Afghans at Kabul airport, an attack claimed by ISIS-K. Today, the now infamous Abbey Gate where the bomb went off is quiet, but signs of the horrors that happened here still remain. It's hard to imagine one year ago this was the scene of such desperation as Afghans tried to flee the country and the Taliban. And all we really have left to remind us of their desperation to flee is fragments of their clothing caught in this barbed wire. The UN says ISIS-K has now expanded into almost all of Afghanistan's provinces. Khalid Zadran, who fought for years as an insurgent, is now the main spokesman for the Taliban's Kabul police. The Afghan affiliate of ISIS, known as ISIS-K, must be a concern for you, though. No, because they don't pose a significant threat in that they cannot take over our country, he says. But they do target innocent people, and we will try to prevent such attacks to keep our country safe. For now, ISIS-K has nowhere near the numbers of the Taliban, and we haven't detected any sort of meaningful support amongst Afghans for ISIS-K, but the group has been able to carry out horrific attacks targeting people who've already suffered so, so much. Vlad. NTS Tayyab in Afghanistan, where he's been doing some phenomenal reporting. NTS, thank you so much. On today's CBS Mornings podcast, MTS will share what it's been like reporting from Afghanistan as the country marks one year since the U.S. withdrawal.